we are back on another day. Uh, some of the same faces, some new, and uh, see some new stuff. Daniel uh, Francis is a historian and author that has, uh, safe to say, a lot of uh, a keen interest and uh, passion for the history of Vancouver. Is that safe to say? It is safe to say. It. We're standing on one of the most ancient spots, certainly on the seawall in Vancouver, generally, the L Lumberman's Arch, it's known as, which is this old ancient Squamish village that was here long before the park uh, was created. Squamish um, First Nation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and apparently we're probably standing on the midden too, you know, these middens where the old the oyster shells, seashells of all kinds, built up over time at these village sites. And when they built the road around the park, uh, the builders dug up this shell and spread it on top as a, as a surface for the original road that was, that was built around Stanley Park when it was created in the 1880s. I see. So the, the, the village was here when the park was created, and um, over time, the people who lived here were offered uh, another reserve, uh, either across the water or somewhere else, and they basically were moved, uh, encouraged to move mm -hmm. and to leave the park. But these were the original in inhabitants. Um, it's also known as Lumberman's Arch, and you see this funny arch it way is a funny arch. behind us. But the original Lumberman's Arch was a huge, big, huge structure built out of tree trunks like that one yeah. with a kind of roof. And it was originally installed uh, in downtown Vancouver to commemorate a royal visit. The Duke of somebody or other uh, came to town. This is pre-World War I. Yes. And the locals put up this big arch. It was a very conventional thing to do. And then afterwards, they floated it around and brought it here and installed it here. A real giant thing. I don't know how many tree trunks were involved. And it was here for, for many years. It probably rotted or something. And yes. then, it was done away with and returned, replaced by this, but this area is always known to Vancouverites as Lumberman's Arch. The Arts and Literary Society of Vancouver thought it'd be a nice idea to establish a Aboriginal village mm -hmm. in the park. Um, but the irony of, of that whole project is they just evicted all the real Aboriginal people who lived here. Yeah. They just kicked them out of the park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they thought they'd have this more pristine village and so they got totem poles from up the coast but that was the origins of that place and then uh, it develops over the years now I think it's one of the major tourist attractions in the park certainly yeah. if not the whole city. So, uh, this is the famous nine o'clock gun that obviously goes off at nine o'clock every night. I think it started in the 1890s uh, and originally was a blast of dynamite that some poor guy had to come down and set off every night. Yeah. Um, and my understanding is they, they did it at 9 o'clock every night so that all the captains, uh, the ships in the harbor could set their clocks uh, and, which, and it was necessary for them to know exact time for the tides and so on. And then it just continued as a sort of Vancouver tradition, one of the sounds of the city. And when did it start? I, I think 18, mid-1890s. Yeah. And it's incredibly loud. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's quite the explosive charge that comes out of that thing at 9 o'clock sharp. Oh, yeah, I hear it in my house in North Vancouver at 9 o'clock every night. This area where we're standing right here was a, a little neighborhood, I guess you could call it, called Kanaka Ranch. Okay, thank you. And uh, it was settled by a bunch of Kanaka families. Kanakas were Polynesian Hawaiians yeah. who came to BC to work for the Hudson's Bay Company in the fur trade. They were recruited in Hawaii on ships, brought here, yeah. and then when their terms were up, many of them settled here, intermarried with, uh, with the women here, had families, yeah. and so uh, one group in particular settled right on on this spot, squatting more or less. They yeah. didn't have uh, rights to the land, yeah. and this little community grew up called Kanaka Ranch. The, the men would would uh, row, uh, do fishing, yes. and they'd row over to the Hastings Mill, which was the main employer. Yeah. We're talking 1870s to 1920s, maybe. Right. And uh, also, this this area is called Coal Harbor, and that was because in the 1850s, coal was discovered on, in Stanley Park. Right. Uh, it wasn't of any high quality, so there was no mine ever established. But the people who lived here actually did take it, make charcoal out of it, and sell it to the 
to the um, sawmill, so that was another way they had of making a living. I see. So it was right through to the 30s. They, they evicted the people one by one. They were squatters in the sense they didn't own their land, but they built their own homes, they had families, they had jobs. Yeah. They're in a sense the builders of Vancouver as much right. as anybody else is.